treating patients for you know all things sexual health amongst others so if you want to give a kind of brief background to your own experience in your own background and uh, how you got to where you are Sure, sure. Um, so outside of medical school, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, my full bio is, is the reason I went into medicine was uh, I had an experience. I was a stage four cancer survivor, um, sort of uh, midlife. And so I decided to go to uh, medical school actually at, at 45. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I got out, my, my interest uh, was in uh, oncology. Uh, but I, I really soon figured out that it was a little bit too close to home with all my experiences that I went through with chemotherapy and just, you know, a lot of the emotional um, issues that go with that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to, uh, to work uh, in a clinic that focused on men's health. And um, what I found was, is it, number one, it seemed to resonate with me. One of the things that I, I noticed in was that uh, it's an incredibly um, sensitive subject for men. Uh, so number one, just uh, getting the courage um, to go to address an issue like erectile dysfunction uh, or a host of other uh, personal issues, medical issues is tough. But then once you get there, it's um, having the right doctor uh, to set the tone, uh, to put patients at ease, uh, and then really get to the root cause of what's going on and provide the rest or the, the best approach to dealing with these sensitive subjects. Uh, there's a number of clinics out there that are incredibly super high volume, very, uh, there's not much time spent with the patient. And uh, my job uh, is really to spend enough time to figure out what's going on and, um, and really select the best route of um, uh, uh, therapy mm -hmm. to help the patient. And do you find, do you, have you found since you started working in this field that people have become more open about having these conversations? Or are they coming to you at an earlier point? Or do you feel that there's kind of been a stagnation in, in that progress? No, I think that uh, it's, it's gotten a little bit more open and a little bit easier. And the reason is um, we are right now, um, we are inundated with commercials on the radio uh, for clinics with erectile dysfunction and about for testosterone therapy, which is another hormone balancing for men is another big part of what I do. Um, so uh, t television commercials, and then there's a host of uh, therapies out there that are being promoted. So I think um, with all that going on, as sensitive as, as it is, uh, it's getting a little bit easier. And, and you know what we're finding also is, is that 50% of men, roughly 50% of men over the age of 40 or are going to have some form, whether it's mild or severe, mm -hmm. of erectile dysfunction as they age for a number of reasons. Um, and so uh, with that in mind, uh, there's, uh, it, I think it's getting a little bit easier, but still when you get there, it's uh, how, the, how the provider handles that is a big part of the, part of the issue. And you touched on it a moment ago, but people coming in to see you for erectile dysfunction, there, you know, often is an underlying issue which is, you know, causing it, and it's maybe a, a larger health health concern. How do you address that? Do you address it in your practice, or do you maybe at times refer patients out to other specialists to help you out, or how does that process work for you in your practice? Right, that's a great question. So the the most important thing is is really having taken the time to uh, with an intake to drill down. Um, to get to the root cause, right? And so, you know, the, there's a number of different things that can cause, number one, I always like to, um, I look at it like, uh, you know, the body is really a biologic machine and think of your brain as a computer and we've got to get a signal, for, right? Our, our, our penis. And so there's a number of things that can go, that can go awry in that. My, my background is in engineering. I was an aeronautical engineer for many years before I went into medicine. And so um, I think it, uh, it works well to think very, um, systematically right we, we as doctors we're detectives um our job is to uh ferret out uh all of the information that can help us really better understand but the bottom line is you know the big picture is there's a number of things there's there's emotional issues depression um anxiety that can cause problems and we've got neurologic issues right with with uh, situations where we have nerve damage from everything from traumatic spinal injuries to uh, surgeries in the groin area, like uh, radical prostatectomies, right, which uh, can take an otherwise perfectly functioning uh, erection or a penis uh, and then render a man impotent uh, mm -hmm. as a result of not being able to get a signal uh, 
to the penis. And then, and then the real, the real uh, chronic things, though, start at the level of the penis, which is going to be a, a couple of things. Uh, number one is um, chronic inflammation as a result of a host of different things. Uh, and this can range from um, what we have, an epidemic of diabetes and elevated blood sugar over long periods of time is inflammatory. Inflammation leads to atherosclerosis and placking. And now suddenly we, we can't get our nitric oxide to function properly. Mm -hmm. And we can't get vasodilation as a result of the stiffening of vessels that go on. So an inflammation can come from the diabetes, um, uh, elevated blood pressure, hypertension, which uh, stresses the vessels and, and, and causes damage. Smoking uh, is another one. And then alcohol, long-term uh, excessive use of alcohol can uh, anything, any inflammatory conditions in general can, are going to lead to a vascular damage. Um, and then leading up to that is, is we have to have, even if the vessels are functioning properly, we have to have enough of that uh, amazing signaling compound nitric oxide on board in order to uh, get the vessels to cooperate. And, and you mentioned there, you know, at the start, the uh, 50% of men over 40 experience some level of rectal dysfunction. If, I suppose based on that data, what, what would you see as um, a preventative measure that you would recommend to any man as he kind of goes into his 40s and older to prevent these issues, like maybe some lifestyle changes, dietary changes, anything that, that you would just see as a, as a given for any man? Right, right, great question. Um, so, you know, in most, it's interesting because what I, what I tell my patients, it's not, unless they've had a recent catastrophic event um, neurologically, it's not really about what's necessarily that's happening right now. It's really the last 10 plus years of what we've been doing to our body um, that's caused the damage, really the underlying damage to the tissues. Um, and so with that said, um, certainly taking a, a good hard look at diet to see if in fact, uh, number one, are we, do we have a diet high in inflammatory foods, uh, processed uh, carbohydrates, sugars, um, even we're, we're seeing now that uh, high protein, animal protein content is, is inflammatory. So it's getting our arms around that, being very honest about what we do eat, and then taking a good look at diet modification. That's a, that's a long-term fix, right? Mm -hmm. That's you change your diet tomorrow. If we've got underlying damage, it's not going to fix anything today, but uh, it allows the, uh, the environment, uh, it, we reduce the inflammation, now the body has a fighting chance on repair. And then the second thing is, now we remove the things that, can, that has uh, been causing the damage, right? And then, then we look at what can we add um, that can uh, help things function better, right? And mm -hmm. so one of those things is um, I test um, all of my patients for nitric oxide. There's, uh, there are test strips that are available out there. I think your company, I know your company has those. Mm -hmm. And um, a simple saliva test can find, can basically at a point, at that point in time, mm -hmm. tell us where we are, right? Because it can change throughout the day depending on supplements we're taking uh, and our diet. But if we, if we can check a patient uh, in the office based on where they are at that point in time on their diet leading up to that point, we can get a baseline of like, okay, here's where we are. Uh, and then there are some fantastic um, so supplements, but adding the proper diet. So dark green leafy vegetables, uh, uh, foods high in nitrates, uh, everything from dark green leafy vegetables. We know that um, uh, uh, beets, are high in that. Even watermelon uh, has some also. That's not something that you can eat in high quantities all the time. But all oh, those those uh, dark green leafy vegetables and just getting the right foods are go a long way in addition to supplementation. Yeah, and it, it sounds like the, the test strips are a component of, say, a patient evaluation or a patient intake that you would do in your practice. Is there any other, I suppose, you know, steps that are just a given for all patients coming through as they start the process with your practice and with your team outside of nitric oxide testing? Right. So, um, you know, again, the, uh, the thorough intake, the nitric oxide testing, and then um, uh, cer certainly important is uh, a physical exam, right? So um, we want to certainly, um, we're going to check their blood pressure. We know that blood pressure, if, if they've had chronic uh, hypertension, that can be leading to it. And again, if we can get the uh, nitric oxide up, that goes a long way. And it's, as we know, 
uh, that nitric oxide isn't just for erections, right? It helps with hypertension, brain function, getting proper oxygen to all parts of the body, right? Um, so uh, we're doing our, we're going to do our physical exam. We're going to check all the vitals. Uh, uh, we're checking what I call, we're, we're going to do a good thorough check of the plumbing, right? We're going to make sure that there's nothing structurally that's contributing uh, to the erectile dysfunction. Um, is, uh, you know, guys, you know, we, we, uh, we, 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 we come with the, the equipment, but we, do, we don't necessarily uh, understand how it's fully operational. And so many cases, even basic hygiene um, isn't always um, one of those things that's, uh, that, that all guys understand. So um, are they circumcised? Are they uncircumcised? Are there underlying um, pathologies that are going on that contribute, may not necessarily be the root cause, but are contributing? Um, and then we're looking for, for things that like plaques, which can uh, contribute to potential a bend or a kink, a uh, Peroni's disease. Um, so, and then um, also uh, we're using, um, uh, we can use ultrasound also to help measure blood flow to see what's going on. And it's, it seems like, you know, looking at your website beforehand, you have a real range of treatments. So every issue that could occur, you have something to treat it. Like, do you find that the majority of patients that come to you that there is nowadays a solution in your bag that you will be able to at least improve their outcomes? Um, you know, that's, a, that's another great question. And I would say for the most part, yes, but it really, it boils down to um, the patient's desires because we have what I call, we have a point solution, right? We have, we have things independent of what the cause is. We have some things that can work on demand um, when we need it. For instance, the PD-5 inhibitors, right? The Viagra and the Cialis and the Levitras of the world, right? Um, they don't fix anything. All they do is help the plumbing work better when we need it to, um, most of the time. And that's the key thing is, is that we find, depending on the severity of what's going on, these can work fantastic. There are some side effects that go with them, right? Um, but the, 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 more, the more dramatic or the severe the damage to the vessels, um, or if we've got nerve damage, we simply aren't getting a, a nerve impulse to the penis to, to create the nitric oxide um, to help to, to allow the, uh, the PD-5 inhibitors to work, uh, then we're not going to get good results. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got that. So, and then secondarily, if that doesn't work, one of the things that we can look at is we have something that's been out there for years, which is called Trimix. Mm -hmm. um, another pharmaceutical product um, that really has a phenomenal success rate, upwards of like 98%, um, uh, which is fantastic. Um, again, if you're looking for a point solution to make things happen now, independent of what's going on, uh, the root cause, sure. uh, that can work. Now, this, the drawback on that is, is that you have to self-apply uh, or administer uh, an injection, uh, a small, tiny injection to the penis um, when you want to get an erection. So, and the results are pretty quick, and depending on how well the doc dials in the medication, the right um, uh, uh, type of uh, the strength and then the volume of medication plays a huge role. And then, and then we get into the things that are really more what I would call repair. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we get into the things like uh, acoustic wave therapy or shock wave therapy. And studies have shown that in depending again how serious the in, in the root cause um, uh, those can be that can work quite well in conjunction with nitric oxide you know there's a whole really uh, it's not it's not any one thing it's really a multitude of things and in anything I would I would do um, really nitric oxide is a key supplement um, along with diet trying to help the, the patient understand their dietary um, uh, issues or, or lacking and then really finding a good solution for adding nitric oxide where we can um, so the acoustic wave therapy is another one that can work along with even uh, um, using what we call a VED, a, a, a vacuum erectile device, or otherwise known as a penis pump, right? Mm -hmm. So that can work adjunctive, um, not, again, the most desirable solution because you've got to apply this device before every time you want to have sex. And sure. they're really more mechanical than they are uh, natural. So it sounds like in your approach, and if you were this was recommending to a patient looking for a practitioner that it's, you know, there definitely is immediate 
interventions, but the reality is that a long-term intervention is going to be the more sustainable and just the better for your health overall. Yeah, that's correct. And again, a lot of it really just boils down to um, the patient, right? Sometimes they simply don't care about a long-term fix and solution. They want, they want a point solution now. Uh, we get guys coming in who've had issues for years, or they, maybe they've been um, divorced for a while or haven't been dating, and suddenly the big date's coming up, and they're <laughs> in. I just need something right now. I don't, yeah. I don't care. I don't have time to wait to help the body repair itself and adding all these supplements. So it really depends on the patient, but yes, we have, we have a now solution and then we've got the bigger long-term solution, which is really um, uh, dietary modifications as well as adding in those nutrients and supplements that can really help the environment. Yeah, and it might be the instant gratification urge that kind of got to this point in the first place. So it's, it's a, probably a bigger issue we won't dive into right now. Um, but so, you know, how, how we got connected obviously is, is through the nitric oxide uh, area, but, you know, we learned then about your book. So tell us a bit more about that and, you know, what, what brought you to write a book and, you know, who your, what, who your intended audience is and what you hope they will get from it. Sure, sure. Yeah. So the book, uh, which actually, if everything goes right, is actually uh, going to be published today. Oh, nice. got work, so I'm very excited about that. It's called um, The Man Plan, The Ultimate Guide to Erectile Dysfunction. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really, it's been focusing in men's health for years um, and seeing, um, uh, first of all, work, working at uh, other clinics uh, and seeing how things are done and now having my own practice and really my approach, which is really a, a much more comprehensive approach to uh, finding root cause uh, and working with the patient if they want to work on a long-term solution, being able to provide them with all the right information um, is, the, is the big thing. So it's really, it's, it's um, helping a patient, number one, um, identify why this happened to them, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, there's a lot of clinics out there uh, they're not bad clinics, but they're really the focus is in, in, in just what can I do to help you get an erection today and that's it. I don't have time to, to, to work with you on a long-term solution. So my goal is, with my background, is root cause, if we can find the root cause, uh, and then put together a plan. And, you know, even a long-term comprehensive plan um, can include a short-term solution using the Viagra, the Cialis, or even the injections, right? So mm -hmm. we've got the ability to get a better erection now while we're working on the longer term. So that's one of the things. But the other thing is I address a, um, a lot of, in the, in the beginning of the book, I address all the reasons why men need to um, uh, address this. Everything from um, their spouse uh, says it's okay that they're not getting uh, erections, but even though they know deep down they, they wish they could. Mm -hmm. um, they have issues with premature ejaculation. They've been with, uh, you know, examples of, uh, you know, they've been maybe with uh, one partner their whole life, and that's all they know is mm -hmm. having uh, an orgasm within the first 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, then suddenly, maybe there's a divorce, they're now dating, and they're finding out that, wow, that, that isn't the norm, and I need to see what I can do about this. Or um, that there just certainly is hope out there if the PD-5 in inhibitors don't work, right? Yeah. Um, and then it's really just, it, the whole thing is, is really, it's an educational process of helping the patient, why did this happen to them, right? What, 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 uh, what's the history of, uh, of what may have caused this? And then, then it's, what are the solutions out there? And is there a solution that best fits them? And, and really, in a way that they can relate to. It's not over the top medical jargon, but it's really written in a way that a patient can relate to. Yeah, so it sounds like, you know, not quite normalizing it, but normalizing the conversation. And, you know, I think a lot of times right. people can end up on an island where they believe they are the only person affected by this. But, you know, by being breaking it down and being able to, you know, identify the root cause, even in a book, they can then go to the doctor and have a much more educated conversation. And maybe it is the thing that encourages them to go and seek professional help. So that's, you know... Excited to see how it goes for you. Um, and that's available, will it be through your own site or just on Amazon or where, where are you be publishing that? Yeah, certainly it's going to be on Amazon uh, as well as uh, certainly here in the office. Um, 
and, and potentially some other sites also. But but Amazon for sure, right out of the right out of the shoot. Yeah. Fantastic. And then if so, someone watches the video and this was wants to learn more about your practice or you know potentially start a consultation with you or even another practitioner that might have a question for you on your approach. Is, is your own practice website the best place to get you or is there a, a kind of a general email that they can reach out to? Certainly general email is um, um, thrivemedinfo at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Our website is www.thrivemed.com. Um, yeah, our, our all great ways. And again, our phone number is 480-257-5022. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Well, when we publish the video, I'll include all that information uh, in the video inf info and people can reach out to you as needed. But, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time and excited for the book to get published. And hopefully we can, uh, we'll be seeing plenty more of you in the medical space and the consumer space. And